All right, welcome back to the program. In case you're just joining us, uh, my guests are with me right now. Um, I will start the introduction from the guests at my immediate right. Yes. Rabiu Hassan mm -hmm. is an economist, is also the MD Mesmed Trust Fund, that's MSMED Trust Fund. He's joining us right here. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And on uh, Skype is my other guest, Dr. Mukhtar Imam, is a senior lecturer in international relations and diplomacy, Bayes University. He joins me via Skype. Um, okay, good to have you two on the program. Can you hear me, Dr. Imam? Okay, I can't hear you, Dr. Imam. Perhaps you need to, perhaps you need to, um, enable your audio or my guys would uh, quickly uh, sort that out there. Let me quickly come to you. Uh, Nigeria's debt is a 28.6 trillion naira. I even checked it this just this morning before I came into the studio in case it has changed. Yeah. <laughs> you know data changes that is true. as at the first quarter of this year according to the national uh, the debt management uh, mm. office. Do we have a debt a growing debt problem? Um, yes, we are heading towards um, uh, figures that will not be very, very uh, sustainable. Uh, even though uh, the circumstances that actually led us into uh, getting into this uh, uh, crisis are not necessarily uh, local. They are some of them could be global, but however, it is uh, very important to suggest that uh, there is there is need for extreme caution in how the Nigerian economy is building these debts. As far as uh, the Nigerian economy is concerned, we need to look at actually. Uh, so many alternatives. I mean, as against just building debts, as we, we we try to grow the economy or meet expenses and expenditures. Um, at the rate it is, um, we cannot call it uh, a dangerous uh, situation, but uh, definitely the trend is suggesting that if we don't uh, do much in trying to ensure that the, the sust we, we, we don't go beyond a sustainable level. I think uh, we, need to do, we need to do more, mm -hmm. looking at how uh, we should not go beyond the red lines. Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to Moneyline with Nancy TV YouTube channel. This is where we provide you with instructive business directions, processes, and guidance to help you assess the right resources to fund your businesses to withstand every form of internal and external shock. You will find here awesome informative videos on business, entrepreneurship, and lifestyle just to help you make informed business and financial decisions. Punch the subscribe button and let us drive you through the world of business. Please follow all our social media platforms on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, and follow us for latest updates on our website. Okay, I'll come back to you. I don't know mm. if uh, Dr. Okay. Okay, Dr. Imam is not ready now. But let me take you up on what you just said. Yep. You say you just did, you did say that our debt problem is not necessarily um, local. Yeah. Why did you say that? Um, the, 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 the Nigerian economy being very dependent on uh, single product for its, the most of its foreign exchange income is definitely susceptible to actually get importing crisis that it ought not to. Uh, what I mean by that is that Nigeria depends on uh, for the large percentage of its foreign income from petroleum product. And petroleum product in its history has remained uh, a very, very volatile product that simple political misaction somewhere can actually lead to serious fluctuations that re really uh, that really can affect the fortunes of an economy, especially Nigeria that depends 
uh, almost uh, significantly on 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 the in, in incomes from uh, petroleum products as major source of foreign income, and therefore hinging our budgets and our national expenses, hinging our growth on that kind of uh, uh, an income or revenue actually suggests that uh, a lot of crisis will continue to ensue within uh, in in the way we actually implement our growth uh, growth plans mm -hmm. now looking backwards into years of nigerian history you would see that every time there is an unhealthy trend the global demand we actually uh, actually tend to suffer and i think uh, that has consistently remained the case despite the fact that uh, we keep speaking about... Well, the question is, would you blame the price of oil in the last few years that yeah. our debt ballooned? Because I remember, I think in 2015, our debt was around $10 billion. Yeah, if I, if 2015. Yes, yeah. in 2015, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. We went into a recession in 2016. Yeah. Our debt right now, the total debt burden in dollar terms is about $79 billion. $79 billion. So will you totally blame the price of oil for that? But I'll allow you to answer that. Let me mm. get um, the view of Dr. Imam. Uh, Dr. Imam is also joining us uh, via Skype. He's the Senior Lecturer in International Relations and Diplomacy at Bayes University. Dr. Imam, if you can hear me, what's your view about Nigeria's g growing debt problem? Doctor, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but I'll need you to frame yourself properly because we can't see you. I'll need you to uh, position oh. the camera in such a way that will get your head shot up to your shoulders. I had to improvise, um, so I'm using a smaller device. Okay, <laughs> okay, good. You know? you're, you're getting it now. Yep. You're getting it now. You okay. know, many of us are getting used to technology these days. We are being forced as a result of the pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> so no blames at all. All right. We had a test run this morning. And yes, we had a test run and okay, so it was good. Good. Mm -hmm. Speak to me about you, what are your views about Nigeria's growth, uh, Nigeria's growing debt problem? Well, um, quite frankly, it is worrisome. Um, that's the reality. Um, there are school of thoughts that will tell you that as far as we have not reached the benchmark and that our GDP to debt ratio still falls um, within the marginal um, figure, uh, I think we're about 25% as we speak, um, this school of thought would argue that we can still manage and that virtually all economies are indebted and so on. But I mean, you look at it as of December 2019, our debt profile in um, in the U.S. dollar rose to about 80, um, 80 billion U.S. dollars, a little over 80 billion U.S. dollars. That is not very healthy for an economy that is trying to drag itself out of the crisis of recession, which has um, been a recurrent issue. The, the, the president did promise that Nigerians, 100 million Nigerians were going to um, be pulled out of um, the. Okay, ma'am, are you still there? Okay, I think he was trying to make a point about the president, uh, the president's promise of pulling out 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. Okay, Dr. Imam, you're back. Uh, we lost you at a point there. If you can hear me, just land on your point. All right, so, so I was trying to say that the, the federal government did promise that we're going to pull 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. And for us to do that, as a matter of fact, what we must do is that we must have a GDP growth at about 80% for at least the next 10 years. Having this sort of debt profile consistently pile up year on year is not very healthy for our economy. And the reason why this consistently happened is as a result of, in my view, misplacement of priorities. Mm. Okay, uh, Dr. Imam, I'll still need you to adjust your camera because I can only, we can't see your eyes. Yes, good. If you can maintain it this way, fantastic. If you can, yes, if you can maintain it this way, it will be nice. Yes, let me come back to uh, Mr. Hassan. Yes, let me come back to Mr. Hassan here in the studio. I did ask the question earlier, should all be blamed for this? Because even with the data that I have, even according to the DMO, our external debt has at March of this year, that's the first quarter, stands at $27.6 billion. The local debt, of course, is more. It stands at $51 billion. In fact, that's the data now for our viewers to see. It's yeah. not my data, it's mm -hmm. from DMO. DMO. 
and total debt stands at $79.3 billion. If you put that in Naira, you get about 28.62 trillion Naira. Naira. The question now is, did all cost this thing? Did all cost now, this now debt to balloon, now the way you are saying it? Now, directly, you might not uh, actually blame oil directly, but it's indirectly uh, the cause because we have not been able to actually put our acts together in terms of ensuring that a significant part of our budgetary f budgets, f budget financing actually rely on this same oil revenue. And where shortfalls from the international price occurs, definitely government would always look for a local alternatives. That is looking at the domestic debt mm -hmm. because it is the cheapest, though the most expensive. Now, looking at the debt structure, you can see clearly that the domestic component of our debts is far higher than the foreign component. And I think that is what uh, the government is, is, is doing. What the government is doing is where uh, vagaries in the price of the global oil market and local demand for expenses uh, happens, and then the, the government would always usually look at the domestic uh, market to tap and get the financing done. Now, additionally, one of the major components of our debt structure is that uh, the subnational debt is equally growing, but uh, even though it's proportion to the gross, the total debt is still uh, manageable. But you would see that the government's concentration or the government's uh, actually effort at Tapping the domestic market for this debt is one of the reasons, that is the ease of getting access to this, these funds is what is actually encouraging the government from doing that. Now, coming down to what we call the total or de debt profile, I want to clearly say that yes, there is no way an emerging economy like Nigeria will not actually build debts, I mean, sustainably, as you want to grow, you need to actually uh, finance some of the growth impetus with debts. Now, it is not absolutely a bad thing to borrow. What is going to be bad is when you borrow and how much you borrow. The Nigerian economy, at the rate we are going, as I suggested, is like we're still within safe waters. But are we within safe waters using which parameter? Now, Just like now, Dr. Imam said, yeah. you can say we are within safe parameters yeah. if you say GDP to debt. To debt ratio. To debt ratio. Debt to GDP yes. ratio, yeah. Are we within safe parameters if you say debt servicing to GDP ratio? Because there was, now, yeah. we, we, we spent close to 99% of our revenue on debt servicing. Mm. That was uh, just a few days ago. So no, which think, parameter are you using? I think, I think not up to 99%. We are looking at about 50%. What we're using, our uh, debt to revenue ratio is about 50% mm -hmm. or thereabout. And that is not still fair. Our debt to revenue to ratio. De debt to revenue ratio. I'm talking of debt servicing. Because well, I think, I we think spend so much right now on servicing the debts, I, uh, paying the interest on the debts. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, the biggest, like I said, the biggest component of the debts is the domestic debt. Yes. Government has leverage and opportunities it can use to manage. Let me give you an example. Most of these debts that you're seeing, uh, that are growing are debts that have been issued earlier and that are called, I can call them recycled. Now, government has leverage in the sense that these debts is denominated in local currency, so government has so many ways it can handle these debts. A lot of these debts are recycled, recycled debts. It's like when this one gets uh, matured and then it will now be reissued again and, and again. So, like I said, and uh, I think one of the most fundamental parameters that you take to determine debt sustainability, yes, is your debt to GDP ratio and debt to revenue ratio and debt service into revenue. Now, looking at all this and given the kind of uh, situation the Nigerian economy has found itself between, 19, between 2015 upwards, don't forget between 2014 to 2015, Nigeria has witnessed a very uh, prolonged recession and the financing that is needed to get to actually grow the economy to a point where by 2018, we saw the economy coming out of recession. It actually was a very massive, very massive fiscal efforts done by the government to actually borrow. Mm -hmm. 
And I think the government only had that as an alternative because you have to spend money to build the economy to get out of the recession, so, which we so successfully did. That, yes, and you're saying that the government has every impetus to borrow because perhaps exactly. there, there's no other option than exactly, to borrow. Exactly, exactly. There are, there are alternatives, mm. but unfortunately our governments these days will always look at the other side. As against, I mean, what I mean by that, now, now, and the governments like individuals when, confront, when confronted with financial crisis, you have the option of reducing your expenses or increasing your revenue. And unfortunately, over the history of this government, and particularly the previous, slightly, not at a greater margin, have actually looked at increasing revenue as the most alternative because it is the cheapest alternative for politicians. Okay. Yeah, cheapest okay. alternative, sorry, cheapest alternative mm -hmm. in the sense that you can just increase rates and you think revenue will grow. The most important, the most important and more effective as have been seen elsewhere, is reducing cost, and reducing cost, and reducing cost. Let me come to Dr. Imam. Mm. I, I, don't, I don't know if you've been listening to your colleague here with me. Are you on the same table uh, with him? Because you actually said earlier that our debts are growing, that problem uh, is worrisome. Uh, when I took a look at the medium term uh, expenditure, framework and the fiscal strategy paper that was released that did I think for the first quarter there I think Nigeria generated a revenue of about 950.56 billion naira according to the MTF and the FSP report and the we incurred a total sum of 943.12 billion in debt servicing that was where the 99 percent came from uh, so <laughs> What, what exactly are we faced with really right now? Reality is we're faced with a crisis. And this crisis is as a result of um, multifaceted, multidimensional um, challenges. Um, like with every social and economic challenge, there isn't a straight jacket rationale or reason why we're in this crisis. It's a mix of a lot of issues. Um, I quite agree with him on some of the issues he has raised. Um, yes, uh, some of these debts are basically rolled over and things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, it, the onus is on the current administration to do whatever it can to get us out of this crisis, um, uh, uh, politically speaking and otherwise. So uh, to the issue of um, the figure on uh, debt servicing, as a matter of fact, it stands about, um, at around 58%. Currently, and that is what has been earmarked for 2019 and, of course, 2020. So we're using a whopping 58% to service debt. This is where we have a challenge that we consistently look around um, our budgets, and um, um, the, you, you find that the expenditures are way high. I mean, for example, you look at the, the document you're talking about now, the MTEF, for example, basically looks at around. Um, um, a total expenditure of about uh, 10 points, some, uh, it's about uh, over 10 trillion. And we're looking at a whooping 40 to 43% of that to be used on expenditure. Now, if we're going to have that huge amount of figure spent on expenditure, yet we're talking about servicing debts going further, how do we manage the crisis of uh, the huge debt that is piling. This is where the issue should actually be focused right now. Because when you look at it critically, you will come to see that if you're spending that much, when you borrow, yes, there is absolutely nothing wrong with borrowing. But the focus should be on what are you borrowing for? Mm -hmm. That's where, the, that's, where, that's where the issue is. Now, if you're borrowing to pay salaries, to, to pay overhead and, and incur uh, a lot of expenditures, unnecessary uh, purchases and things like that, at the end of the day, you will find that you're still going to, to remain in that circle. But where the borrowing begins to shift, and quite frankly, this is not, we're not here to toss blames around. If it's about blame game, there's enough to go around. Yes, the previous administration had its issues. The current administration is facing its challenges. There are also areas where we must give kudos to the current administration in terms of infrastructural development, for example. Yes, the government is trying to do a lot. And of course, infrastructural development is not something that happens in one day. It takes a span of time before you begin to reap the proceeds of this infrastructural development. This is where we might have a crisis. But again, since we are uh, uh, where we are now, as a result of, like I said, multi-dimensional um, uh, challenges, plus the COVID-19, which nobody expected was going to come, which basically hit hard on economies globally, and ours is no exception to that. 
The reality is we're faced with a huge crisis, a dilemma of how to reduce um, our debt ratio. It is very, very essential. Okay. Uh, Dr. Iman, please, I still need you to adjust the camera so that we can see you well. We can get a better I picture. Know. Yes. Is this good? Yes. Can, I, yes. can you tilt it back a bit so that we can get your full face? This you know, Yes. This way? Uh, no. Okay. So no, no, we are not good yet. Let's try and l let's let's try and adjust it. Just zoom out a bit so that we can get your full face. Okay. The question now is: We have a twenty-eight point six trillion naira debt. Uh, don't forget that IMF also gave us three point four billion dollars from its rapid financing instrument. The question now is: Who pays back this debt to? I hope you know that we are all owing, yeah. including you, yeah. including me. And when I did the and, and when I did the mathematics, just the simple arithmetic, uh, I did interview the acting chairman of uh, the National Population Commission, was it last week? Mm -hmm. And I asked him how many we are in Nigeria. He told me we'll be 206 million this year with a growth rate of about 2.56%. So that means all Nigerians we are owing. If you do the math, you are owing about 138,000, about 139,000 naira each. Yeah that I, I don't know if I spent and my own local government and my own power and my own water and my own everything. Mm -hmm. And how come will I be owing 139,000 Naira? Yeah. If you understand what I yeah, mean. So I that know. is the import of what we are saying Nigerians. I hope you understand me. Oh. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if I'm speaking <laughs> jargon or we are saying Nigeria <laughs> owe money. None mm -hmm. of us owe. You they owe 139,000 Naira. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I think, um, yeah. Uh, quite an interesting and remarkable uh, analysis. <laughs> uh, literally, uh, our debt to uh, our GDP, uh, debt per capita is uh, not, uh, uh, is, is still not out of, probably given the sheer size of our population when compared to other countries that uh, are our peers. Now, but the most important thing is like he suggested, which I quite agree, is, is about building debts that is sustainable. Sustainability in the sense that we build debts on the strengths of building the economic capacity to generate more income, more productivity, more income opportunities. The for question individuals. now is that are you seeing that? Yeah. With my analysis of each Nigerian owing 139,000, mm. including my little boy at home. Mm, yeah. That, that hasn't earned money, though he's spending a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's owing 139,000. Who yeah. pays back Nigeria's now debt? I think, I think when will this debt be sustainable? <laughs> the infrastructure and all of that, or exactly. the debt that we have ballooned? Exactly. Would, would those category of people, the 43% of Nigeria's population, mm -hmm. that is less than 15 years, yeah. are they going to be the ones that we will, ha will hang this debt on? Uh, Nigeria is about its people and its natural assets. Therefore, it is not only the people that will be held liable like we literally are looking at here. Now, the debt is, is given on the confidence that these institutions have on Nigeria as a nation. That means its individuals and its resources. And therefore, uh, I want to look at the matter a little differently from the literal um, analogy, even though it's done to make people understand clearly. Now, these debts can be addressed. This growing debt can be addressed. And this will ultimately be in the way of the government being more sensitive. I mean, economic driven fiscal policy other than political expediency driven fiscal policies. Mm -hmm. What I mean by this is that government has an option to reduce, to continue to create a sustainable framework for reducing public resources wastage. If you look at our various budgets, it clearly shows that there are certain areas that we need to do more on. For example, the cost of administration, the cost of the political administration. What I mean by that is the National Assembly has been talking a little uh, uh, being of comfortable about the debt. But when you ask, why is some of these debts, what, what is this debt used to finance? We have seen growing number of 
a significant percentage of the budget being used to finance the profligacy of the political class. Uh, what I mean by the political class is like we have the biggest legislature in the world. They will argue with you that it's not They true. will always argue. We have the biggest legislature. The size of our public service is too big for the nation. They would also argue The with National you that Assembly is still creating institutions that ordinarily were conveniently managed from the dex, a dex or two in a ministry. And but parastatals are created in the name of, I mean, needs. But when in actuality it is political expediency being put at the fore while the economic expediency is put behind. And I think the best way, what the best way, the best way to manage, to create a framework that will help us sustainably manage this debt and probably go out of this debt in the next 50 years, I say, is somewhere in the sense that the government, both at national and st state level, becoming more prudent in public finance, managing public finance, reducing extra budgetary expenses, looking at creating a very viable private sector that will generate more opportunities for the government to tax, as against increasing rates, tax rates, and what have you, to mm. increase revenue. Let I see more work needs to be done on the side of reducing public expenditure, public wastage, mm. than actually looking at increasing revenue to pay, to pay, to pay, to pay, to pay, to pay for debts. debts. Yeah. Dr. Imam, please, please, can you come in here? Uh, because the issue of debt, any, any, any time we discuss it, is very, is a very sensitive issue. It is, it is, it is. You know, the, can I come in now? Yes, please do. All right, all right, thank you. You see, uh, Oh, Dr. Imam, it seems the next, okay. You okay. Hear, um, okay. 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 Can you hear me now? Yes, I can I hear you ready? now. I did say earlier that the I the issue of debt is always a sensitive issue. Uh, you know, I've had arguments, yes. different places over the years, that countries, even developed countries, or oh, their debt ratio is very yes. big. One will argue, okay, U.S. debt is also very big. You see, uh, Japanese debt to GDP ratio close to perhaps over 150 percent, U.S., even China and all of that. But can we also compare ourselves with them, with countries that can afford to be printing money and everything is fine? You see, um, yes, in terms, of, uh, in, in terms of making comparison, it's something essentially different. Uh, but the reality is, is we find ourselves in the fold of um, less than the developed countries in the world. So there's even a basis for comparison in that regard. Now, um, like I was trying to say earlier, to draw back a bit, part of the reason why a lot of Nigerians are very concerned about the debt profile rising up and all of that is because when you look at the figures, it is startling. For example... Mm. Okay, like, Dr. Imam, we'll come back to you in a bit if we can get a clearer uh, network. Like I did actually ask Dr. Imam earlier in terms of... Oh. Dr. Imam, we'll come back to you. The network is not being friendly this morning at mm. all. I don't know why. Is it the weather? Because we blame a lot of things. <laughs> we blame the natural elements for some physical <laughs> things that we are in control of. <laughs> so perhaps it's the weather. Network people. <laughs> That's another board game. And we are spending money. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, Mr. Zan, um, you know, for the issue of debt, mm. the question you mentioned before that perhaps this may be paid in the next 50 years. What we are owing now. Yeah. I wonder how, how old will I be in the next 50 years? I don't want to be saying this whole story <laughs> that these monies were being owed when I was. <laughs> you are saying now that public expenditure, we should manage public financing well. Yeah. Are you seeing that? Um, are you seeing that? Political willingness? Uh, that is what is actually deficient. The political will to uh, actually do the needful, especially in terms of the fiscal element that will require taking a very drastic measure to reduce public expenditure and public resource wastage. I think that is where our politicians are, are yet to actually see reason to be committed to. I have... I have uh, over the years observed that uh, a lot of times when issues of, for example, 
the, 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 the Federal Government Committee on Public Service Reform, Public Service Structural Reform, that is the Arosanya Committee report. You could, no, you could notice that the, the government, the previous government, because of the political situation it finds itself, it was not able to actually implement it, only commented. And what we anticipated was that this government will come and implement it to the full. But this government unfortunately, is Unfortunately, no, no, no. I think it's unfortunately it is when it became six years after. So kind, 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 kind of. because of the pandemic. Because of the pandemic. And that's why I'm saying you would not, this is what actually will, will suggest the fact that it is political expediency that actually drive politicians from taking economic decisions other than economic mm. facts. For example, if there were no corona uh, crisis, probably the implementation of the Orosanya panel report would not have been even considered because, because and, and, and that will have actually reduced almost 30% of public expenditure that goes into paying people and institutions of government that actually doesn't have any reason to even continue to exist. Okay, let me bring I, in I Dr. Iman, mm. Iman, if you can, if you can mm. get him. Okay, mm. um, he's not available yeah, yet yeah, now. Yeah. Let's still continue this conversation. Yeah. How much of this public debt that has ballooned is a function of the Naira that has depreciated over the years? Because this government would also argue, yeah. the DMO uses, I think, 360 to 361, 361. yes, as exchange rate. Yeah. How much of the Naira's differentiation yeah. is, is functional in this public uh, debt growing? Yes, I think uh, um, that is very important because normally uh, debt exposure to foreign currency would always have implications when the relative value of the local and the foreign currency actually change. So there is, uh, I think that the, the, the capacity of Nigeria to actually service and, 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 and refinance those foreign debts depends squarely on its, capa not on its capacity to generate more Naira or in its capacity to generate more dollars. So there is, of course, uh, a pricing element there, but I think the sig its significance, I mean, in determining the capacity of Nigerian government to pay back the, 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 the loan, I think is not very, very, uh, very high. But having said that, Nigeria as an economy that is growing, despite all these challenges, I think holds greater holds great potentials. If our leaders will be able to do the right things, I mean, do the right things. I mean, fiscally, to make sure that the economy grow enough so that it will generate enough productivity, enough income to be able to continue to service this debt. The history of debts globally is something that has been with nations struggling to grow. Let me be very precise here. The United States is where it is because it is leveraging on its capacity to borrow. The greatest countries of the world, unfortunately for us, have the biggest debts. And therefore, like I say, it is not the debts that is the problem. Like suggested by my colleague, it is what you use the debt for. Okay, L yeah. let, me, let me bring him in, Dr. Imam. Um, just, uh, we have a few minutes to the end of the show. I'm so sorry that the network hasn't been so friendly uh, to us for us to get enough of your uh, views. Uh, I do also remember the former Emir of Kano, the former Central Bank Governor, um, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, SLS, as it's fondly mm -hmm. called. Mm -hmm. I did say at a point that Nigeria is heading to bankruptcy. Uh, with what we're seeing right now, about 28.6 trillion naira of debt for the country, um, our debt servicing is high to revenue. What we are making, we're also using it to service revenue. And the rest, going for recurrent expenditure, yeah. uh, for paying uh, uh, workers and all of that. And a little of it is going to capital expenditure. Yes. Are we really heading, where are we heading to? I don't want to say hell, <laughs> but where are we heading to? Statistically speaking, we're in a crisis, but that doesn't mean that we tend to out of the woods. Um, like I was trying to say earlier, part of the reason why people have this concern, which is basically very germane, is the fact that when you look at the they are actually very startling. For example, there's a pending 5.5 billion uh, US dollar um, request loan sitting right now before, the, before Congress. You also have another uh, over 3 billion US dollars that was approved in the first quarter of 2020. 
And then, of course, this is aside um, the rapid financing response facility, which was issued by the IMF. So it means we are basically in a crisis situation, a crisis on top of a crisis. COVID-19 has posed significant challenge and so on and so forth. But still, that doesn't mean we cannot get on the percent of our revenue at present is going to be used for service. Mm. But the reality is this, government needs to begin to prioritize. This is what I'm trying to say that. Where okay, let me bring in Mr. Hassan here. Uh, are we really, we are in a crisis, definitely. But where are we heading to? I actually... With what you're seeing uh, right no, now, no, I with the to signals you're no, seeing. No, 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 I think, I think uh, to say we are in a crisis, I think would be too much of um, pessimism, I should say. Mm. <laughs> I think uh, we are heading to would be the best one. Reason being that we still can, the, the larger, the, our debt structure make it create a little leverage for us. That's the largest component of the debt is domestic debts and government have its ways and means to address things like that. And going forward, as long as the Nigerian government remains the sole and single producer of the Naira, I think government has a lot of ways and means it can do. What I keep emphasizing is we are really, we are heading to a very uncomfortable now, and unsustainable situation, I, but not at the, the crisis in, level. That just in a few seconds, why did you say we are not in a crisis mode? A why? I want to understand why. Yeah. We are in a pandemic. The, econo the pandemic has worsened our economy. We are not in charge of price of oil. All price this morning, 43 US dollars, yeah. even like you analyzed mm. earlier. The debt that we are having right now, the servicing of that debt, a lot of our revenue is going into that servicing exactly. of that debt. Yeah. A lot of capital expenditure may not just be met. Mm. So we are not in a crisis yet. What I'm Until saying is... What happens, no, really? What, what I'm saying is government still have other options. Other, other options. What I mean, not, not, not financial options, fiscal options. Like what? To, for example, the government have actually reduced the, this year's budget by, 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 by a significant percentage. This is one of the options. You reduce budgets are expectations, and then when mm. your revenue, there is a revenue shortfall or lingering revenue What shortfall. suffers then? And they, what will suffer there is capital expenditure. No. Debt servicing will still be d happening there, as well as recurrent mm. expenditure. Yeah, so yeah. why we perhaps could be in the crisis mode is because what should be used or the monies that should be used for development, think, it's yeah, nowhere yeah, to yeah, be yeah. found. If, if, you, if you would look anyway. at this, uh, can, anyway, I, can we'll I conclude? Yes, conclude <laughs> in five seconds. If you, if you look <laughs> at, at, the, at, at, it, uh, at the entire thing scenario, at the, uh, at the point of crisis, then you must have to price, you're definitely pricing the COVID-19 crisis. Mm. Okay, I think we'll, we'll leave it at that. Mm. Thank you very much for joining me much on much. the show today. Yeah. I've been speaking with Rabi Hassan, an economist and the MDMS Mesmed Trust Fund, yes. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. And Dr. Uh, Mukta Imam has also joined us, Senior Lecturer in International Relations, Diplomacy at Bayes University. Thank you all for being a part of the show today. Thank you, Dr. Imam. The network has not been friendly to us, but we'll do it again sometime. Thank you for watching our video. Please hit the subscribe button below, turn on post notification to follow all our updates.